If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Mystical Mondays. And I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, and this is Spirit Guides. I am here, as always, with Joshua Radawan. We are spiritual coaches, and I am a transformational shaman, and we are here to talk to you about everything in the spirit world, in the personal growth world, in the magic world. And today, we're going to have that conversation, magic and manifestation. Can you really pull a rabbit out of your hat? That's our topic. (laughs) You excited, Josh? If there's one woman I know that can actually pull a rabbit out of her hat, I'm sitting right across from her this very day. So, uh, I, I, you know, we were talking a little bit before the, the episode, and you know, you are such a wizard with the, the the words, the technical terms of of all this. And I always like I, I I'm so much of a student of you still at this at this point and in, in, in on this journey and in, in regards to this. So I'm I'm really excited for this one because this is going to shore a lot of things up. And if it's doing it for me, it's going to do for a lot of people out there as well. Yeah. So we, as per usual, we're going to be breaking down the barriers between different traditions. Magic is a term that comes out of Wicca and the Hermetic traditions and most of the pagan traditions, not, not all, but a lot of the ma- pagan traditions. And manifestation is more of a new age term. And, you know, creation is, uh, you know, comes from the biblical constructs and from the Torah, the Torah, sorry, and the Quran. You know, we talk about creation in in terms of God creating. And so, you know, we're going with the Jesus, Jesus version of God, which is we are God and God is us, and we are all God's children, meaning we are all parts of God. And so, within this construct, we look at how do we create and manifest and do magic in the world. Uh, And so, there are a variety of different forms of these things. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about all this stuff over time. But I want to talk today about just the act of creation, right? Because magic and manifestation and spell work and, and creation and, you know, I don't even know, it's all, all the words for, for that same process, right? Uh, prayer, prayer is another form, right? Although, Oftentimes, one of the least effective forms because it involves giving up of the power of your power and hoping that the the deity you are praying to will deliver to you what you want. And it removes from the act of creation one of the most powerful parts of creation, which is the expectation that it will work and the the looking for the end result. Uh, So, you know, this is one of those places where we can look at the elements of what it takes to create on the energetic and then to bring that across the veil, across the archaeus, which is the alchemical term for the, the barrier between the energetic world and the physical world, to bring that across the archaeus into physical reality. And so let's let's talk a little bit about what that means because we're going to use these terms a lot over the course of time in this podcast and so I want to define them for you. When I say magic, it's usually energy work, any sort of energy creation process and Josh, you have heard this enough times in your studies with me when what does it take to do magic? Intention intention that is all it takes to do magic and people don't believe me they the, especially beginners they make it much harder than it has to be but the fact is what you intend is what you create we talk about this at the end of every episode what you intend is what you create and so therefore you know it's important to choose your intentions wisely and so magic is about intention and creation is about intention manifestation is about intention Prayer is about intention. Every every way you want to say it, it's all the same. Spell work is about intention, right? It's it's all the same stuff. They are synonyms across all these different platforms, uh, all these different disciplines. And so you want to you 
it doesn't matter what word you use. I tend to use magic because it's short. <laughs> it's the shortest word. And I don't mean it to be, oh, this, you know, sort of witchy thing. It is just, you know, it's the shortest word. <laughs> For me, energy work is three syllables, manifestation, three syllables. It just takes too long. I like magic. Magic is short and it's fun. It's fun. We like fun. Fun. Yes. So let's talk about what it takes to do magic. Okay. We, we say intention. That's very short, sweet, and to the point. It is the most simple form of, of what it takes, but there are many more complexities to it that you can layer on top of it if you choose to do so. And so... When we're talking about magic, and I'm going to use this term blanketly to cover all the things that I just said. So please hear that with whatever language you need to hear, translate accordingly. And when we talk about doing magic, there are some elements to it. First off, you want to be certain that you are using positive language, not negative language, because your subconscious mind and the energetic world do not hear no. They don't hear not. They don't hear negatives. You only hear the positive. So if you say I am a non, if you say I don't smoke, then they hear I smoke, right? If you say I am a non-smoker, that one's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's still non, right? So it, it's like one of the things that I, it's one of the hardest things about smoking to, to do is the identity shift is I'm a non-smoker. I, I don't, I don't smoke. I I don't. And I never say I don't smoke or I'm a non-smoker. I never say those things. Those are not part of my identity. It's just smoke, you know, cigarettes are not part of my world, right? And so that's one of the harder transitions to make when there's not a word for the other thing. So if you are struggling to make an identity shift in that way, then making up a word for the other thing might be helpful. You know, I am, you know, biddly bop or whatever, right? <laughs> Which in your word, in your world means that somebody for whom smoking is irrelevant, right? You can make up a word, right? And then that way, if you know what the word means, then that way you can live into that. But so language is important when we're doing magic, right? Language is important because it, it frames what we're creating. And so you have to be careful about how you use magic in your world. And so I had a friend, so many years ago, and, and I I'm, used to live in this house that we called the magical house. And we called it the magical house because there were six people living in the house and several others who were visiting on a regular basis who were all magical people. We were shamans and witches and, you know, various traditions and backgrounds and whatever, and, you know, energy healers and things like that. And we, we actually had a list of rules for the magical house because you needed them. <laughs> Each of the rules came as a result of something that went wrong in the house. And so we, you know, we, we did this work in this house and, and the, okay, I'll tell you the rules. So the rules were... <laughs> Rules were no mucking about with time and space within the confines of the property. Okay, that was number one. And that was because one of our people did. He he was doing some manifestation and some spell work around his changing the timing of things and things like that. And everyone in the house had a time-based problem as a result of the work that he was doing on the property, uh, not intending it to, to, to impact everybody, but because he wasn't clear about the, ex the scope of how far it went around him, it impacted. We were all late to something that day. <laughs> we were like, what the hell? <laughs> so so uh, that one became a rule because <laughs> there was blowback. And then no, so no mucking about with time and space within the confines of the property. Don't summon anything bigger than your head. If you summon it, it's your responsibility to banish it because one of our people in the house summoned a goddess of the moon and then was 
freaked out by what he had summoned and wanted somebody else to banish it. And we were like, no, you brought it, you banish it. That's how that goes. Nobody else is going to do this for you. You got to do this. And and he was not happy. But yeah, don't summon anything that you can't banish and don't summon anything bigger than your head because those things are hard to banish, right? That's that's, that's why. And then ghosts cor- or, or, or guests, corporeal and non-corporeal may stay for three days and they must only stay in your room. And this is because Rachel liked to invite the fairies in and the fairies would come and muck about with things in people's rooms and mess with things. And, you know, I had some wards on my room, but if I had a friend standing at the door and say, hey, honey, come on in. And because I used the word honey and not the person's name, the fairy would go, oh, you meant me. And they'd wander in. And I'm like, no, I didn't. And then I would find things open and you know, things moved in my room that were not moved by me or anybody else. And I'm like, mm, Rachel, get your fairies out of my room. So, so, you know, that was that one came from that one. And then do not open doors and windows that they you do not know where they go. And that was a function of somebody doing that, obviously. And then if doors and windows appear of their own accord, do not wait to see what happens. Inform the house warden immediately. That one also happened in our basement. (laughs) You know, and then always, always, always take out the trash was both a physical and an energetic one being clean up after yourself. And this is this is a great lead into because. I talk to a lot of energy healers, specifically people who are trained in Reiki, right? Reiki is taught in a vacuum of all, you know, in regards to all other energetic pathways, right? So it's its its own thing and it's not integrated with other energetics. And there's a problem with that because oftentimes nobody in the Reiki teachings teaches you to clean up your physical space and your energetic space. So let's do the math together. You're, you've got a line of people coming through the door, all of whom are bringing crap into your, your space. You are then pulling that crap off of them and dropping it on the floor, which is usually what they're taught to do. Now you are walking through all of other people's crap on the floor and treading it out, usually into your house because most people are working out of their homes, but if not, even out into the world and back to your house because it's attached to your feet, Right. So eventually it makes its way into your home, but now it starts to build up, build up, build up. And and you're like, oh, God, this space feels awful. (laughs) I need to clear it. Yes, you should be clearing that crap between every single client, not once a week. You know, you don't want your clients walking through other people's crap on your floor and then getting up on the table and you have to do double the work because you already pulled that stuff off of somebody else and now it's on them, right? It's just, it's good energetic hygiene is a good idea, right? So, but these are things we don't think about, right? These are, there There are energies in the world and because we don't physically see them, we don't always think to, to deal with them, right? Now, with magic, you're dealing with the energetics of the world around you. You're dealing with the energetics of the people around you. You're dealing with your energetics. And if you're an empath, your energetics combined with everybody else who's inside your energy field because you have terrible boundaries and you're trying to monitor everybody and you've shoved your energy field out to the edges of the room. And now you have no defense against other people's strong emotions. And if you hate that idea, then go get the Boundaries for Empaths class that's free on my website at kellysparta.com because... You shouldn't have to deal with that crap and it's free. Just click on the blog and then on the right-hand column, you'll see Boundaries for Impasse. You can click through to that. You should absolutely do that class. It is free and it's absolutely worth your time. It'll change your life, okay? All right, now. So, manifesting. And I've been talking about it, Josh. Do you want to say something? Because you I have, a, like- <laughs> I, I have a great story about this. And it's so funny because it just played out in my life yesterday. So I own a property here in Wisconsin. And there's a three-year plan to really make this a retreat center at some point. Now, the, the problem is this is an old Amish house. And the, the property was kind of beaten down over, over years. And so, you know, having a background in construction, I'm like, I'm not doing this by hand. I mean, like I could spend a whole summer out here. And I was like, I just, I need a bobcat. But in order to 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 rent one here, there's just a whole litany of crap you have to go through. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So what I do, I, I sat in meditation and visualization in the morning. I was like, I'm visualizing a bobcat. 
And I was like, I can see it. It's clearing up the property. It's backfilling everything. It's just going to make this property beautiful. And it's and, and I'm not going to have to spend three months of backbreaking labor to do it myself, which is my usual MO. But since <laughs> I've learned magic, I, I use this visualization technique. And I shit you not. There was a gentleman that we had a old RV for sale. And he showed up to, to buy the RV with a trailer. And guess what I was on the back of it? The bobcat. bobcat a bobcat. <laughs> so we sell him the we sell it to him. And I was like, hey, do you rent that bobcat? And he's like, Well, no, I, I I never if I have to. I was like, Well, that's cool. And I didn't say anything else. And by the end of the time talking to him, he's like, you know, why don't I come by and just uh do the bobcat work for you for a couple of days? And I was like, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so so now this is the thing is that you did the manifestation, but you also said yes when it showed up. And that's where a lot of people screw up. A lot of people go wrong with that because they will they will get what they've asked for and then go, oh, no, 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 I couldn't let you do that. Or, oh, you know, let me pay you. Or, oh, you know, all of that. It was that close. Because yeah. I know that lesson because I've been through it before. Like, oh, but also may I, I'm obligated to now give you one love in return. <laughs> right. But it is, I, I just accepted it with a, with a grateful heart. And, uh, yeah. And this is the piece, right? So, you know, I had the same thing when I was, I had a retail store called Mystical Times back in 1998, 99, 99. And it, and this store, I was building it out and I had no money. I mean, I was starting a retail store with no money. Like I, I spent $660 to open a retail store. Do the math on that, right? And, and then I, I think I put maybe, maybe $500 or a thousand bucks on a credit card. That was it. And so I was renovating this store because it was garbage when I got it. And we were putting it together. And so there were there were a bunch of things that happened. Manifestation wise, I was like, oh, I do not want to refinish these floors. I did that in my house and I hated it and I sucked at it and it just wasn't good and ah, I don't want to do it. And so I I was sitting there and this guy walked by and he was, you know, very disheveled, you know, looked like he hadn't washed his clothes in a few days, you know, <laughs> it was just like, you know, and he was just, just a guy, you know, and I was in a retail store and so, you know, glass windows to the street. So, you know, people, people ask this question when I tell the story. So I'm setting the, the, I'm setting the stage for it. But in the process of him walking by, he stuck his head in and said, hey, what did you do it? Because I was painting walls and stuff. And I said, I'm re redoing the, the store. And he said, oh, y you want some help? And I'm like, I can't afford to pay you. And he was like, no problem. I'm bored. I'm happy to help. I said, I can buy you lunch. He said, great. Pizza would be great. I'm like, okay, awesome. And so, you know, he's like, what do you need? What do you do? I was like, I really need the floors finished. Do you know how to do that? He's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can even get you the contractor rate for the sander. And I'm like, awesome. You know how much the contractor rate, rate saved me? 10 bucks. You know how much the pizza cost me? 10 bucks. Push, right? <laughs> and he spent two days working for me. Two days. No, no pay. He just was out of work at the time and wanted to keep busy. Nice guy. Never saw him again. He just showed up to help out. And I was incredibly grateful. And I said, yes, but a lot of people would have said, oh, no, I can't let you do that. Or, you know, oh, blah, blah, blah. Stop being responsible for other people, right? You know, you don't owe them because they offered to do something nice for you. That's not required, right? So that's the other thing that gets in the way of magic is that we say no when the manifestation comes through, right? And then the, uh, here's another fun story about that store that is another magical story, right? Speaking of setting intentions, as we were painting the floors after we sanded them down, as we were painting them, I was setting an intention for a protection. And that protection was to protect the store from people stealing and, you know, whatever else, right? It was just, you know, generalized protection. And we actually built, so there was a really ugly yellow lolly column in the center of the, of the, the main retail space. And, and I built a tree around it. We built an oak tree, a lightning struck oak, oak tree around that lolly column using chicken wire and, and uh, paper mache, right? And, or plaster of Paris. I never know what the difference is. We blended up plaster and, and, uh, 
and newspaper. So whatever that is, but we, we formed it and wired it in and did the whole thing and painted it. And it was so good when we were done with it, that people would walk by outside stare at the tree because we had i'd also found some a big branch that had been shed by an actual red oak tree and had put the wired the branches up to the ceiling and so people would stop and back up across the street to look up to see if the tree was coming out of the top of the building <laughs> it was hysterical but the point is that we did a lot of protections right we we intended to protect the space and as we were going through and doing the renovations, this random lady walks in and she's walking through the store and she's like, "What? what's going to be in here? And I told her and she's like, oh, I'll never come in here. I'll never come in here. I'll never come in here over and over and over again. And it was so weird. I was not going to disabuse her of that notion. I was going to let her keep her belief that she would never come in here because she was weird. And I was like, OK, yes, you will never come in here. Yes, I, I support that. Flash forward three months. I'm sitting there with my insurance agent who knows everybody in town. And I looked at him and she walks by. I said, who is she? What is what was going on? He's like, oh, don't let her in your store. She's a local kleptomaniac. She'll steal everything. And I said, well, she'll never come in here. Right. Because <laughs> the energy right. was working, man. Right. And a year and a half after we opened, we did inventory. Now we had a lot of kids wandering through the store. We had a lot of rando people wandering in and out. A year and a half later in a retail store, we had lost $12 worth of inventory. And I was fairly certain we had given it away because we had a tendency to give a rock here and a rock there or whatever, just something that people would need, right? And sometimes we forgot to write it down, right? And so I'm certain to this day that we had zero loss. We just had $12 worth of we didn't write it down when we gave something away, right? Yeah, you know, it was from that story. I absolutely used that in our, you know, when we opened our shop. And I had so many cool experiences with that that particular, you know, Ooh, concept. You so we had we were having a group meeting and one of the women I was in the in the collective with had had been having some issues with her boyfriend and he showed up, you know, and, and it was right at the front door. And we're kind of sitting over here and he like could not go past this front door because they were I didn't know this, but they were arguing beforehand. And he gets like right at the the threshold and the light start. There's a front door light. And it just starts flickering. And I was like, <laughs> I was just having a silent laugh. You know, everybody had known I put the wards up. And I was like, that's a really cool confirmation. Um, but, you know, as as far as I know, you know, we didn't have any loss uh, while, while I was there either. And uh, but that but that was really cool. And it, we also used it because we were doing energy work in there as well. And we right. didn't want people bringing in their things, you know. So we kind of set up that little, that little holding tank for, you know people's uh, Klingons. <laughs> yeah. So wards, by the way, are protections that you place on a piece of property. So I'm going to ask you this question because we, this is the first time we've talked about this. Did you take that down when you left the store? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Good job. <laughs> All All right. Right. She has to, I want to, I want to reiterate, she has to ask me these questions because I have done things where I've opened up circles and then I call her three days later. Like, well, I can't, I just, I just can't, I'm, I can't move. I don't have any energy. She's like, well, what were you doing? And I was like, well, I, I did this show last week and I, you know, held this energetic container. She's like, well, did you take it down? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will. <laughs> this has happened more than once. So that is a very fair question. <laughs> and to be fair, I asked the question because I have made that mistake more times than I can count. So, you know, these are. <laughs> why she cares. That is she the cares diagnostic. About <laughs> Ellie cares about her people. Let me let me tell you. <laughs> so. so I'm like, yeah, that's diagnostic question. Number one, did you take it down? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> before we do anything else, that's probably the answer. So, yeah. Um, it, when you place wards on something, when you do protections on a property, setting the intentions is super important, right? Because the language that you use in, impacts it, right? But, you know, let's tell another cool story because I was, so I had a protection on my house in Virginia and we, I woke up at one morning. And I'd been having this dream that all these trees were falling. I was riding my bike down a main road 
and in the middle of the night and all these trees were falling and you know they were in they were in danger of bringing down the power lines and the power lines and you know they brought the power lines down and all the the lights went out and it was dark and all i was trying not to get hit by the trees as they were falling on my bike right and i wake up and i look out the window and they the massive tree in our backyard has come down three quarters of the way and is it's coming up from the roots and and it is just shy of hitting our fence and it is just shy of taking out the power lines above it. And uh, so that's a ward telling you there's a problem, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, the tree came down. The, you know, a quarter of our yard was completely filled with the top of this tree. And so, you know, we spent some time fixing that. But speaking of bouncing off of the wards, uh, we had the wards set at the property line and you know covid had just started like i don't know a month or two before and this guy who i don't know he was he was just some character who used to walk around our streets and homeless i think maybe i don't know he was always a little too clean for that but had that vibe about him right not not a good not not that all homeless people are bad but this guy just didn't have a good vibe about him right he had a i'm not a I'm not somebody you want to hang out with kind of vibe, right? So, and I, my, my intention, the ward intentions for this house were about, you know, you got to have good intent to get across the property line <laughs> or at least neutral. And he went to try and talk to my husband who was down in the back, uh, down the side yard. And he went to walk across the line and literally rocked back. And I was watching out the window and I started laughing and he, <laughs> he just stops and starts talking to, the, to my husband and tries to get my husband to walk up to him and because he can't get across the property line. <laughs> and he, he, he tried everything. He was like, hey, you want to shake my hand? And and my husband's like, it's COVID, dude. No, I don't want to shake your hand. Are you crazy? No, I'm not. That's not what we're doing. And and, you know, but he couldn't get across. He was he was looking for an invitation to cross the property line and asking to shake his hand would have been an invitation to cross the property line. And I was like, no, you don't get to do, if you're bouncing, you get no invitation. That's how that works, right? I so, had a couple of those occurrences with my ward. So one was when it was super interesting. Like, so right at the edge of the ward, there was an ex-business partner of, of my fiance said there was a unique energetic between the two of them. Well, she had some stuff to drop off that was Cassie's, and she just literally threw it at the car. It landed right at the ward. Um, <laughs> and then I, I had a, you know, I, I was dealing with another practitioner at one time, and all of a sudden, right at, the, right at the edge of my property, there was a dead snake. And I had my ward keyed to something. I'm not really going to let that out here, but that was a, it, it let me let me know exactly what was what was going on. So I love, gotta love magic. I mean, it's right? just, you know, if. If you're feeling, I mean, it's just never a, a bad idea to learn this stuff. I mean, because it is so beneficial in, in so many ways in, in your day-to-day -day life and how you can really clear up the energy to work from a better place, right? Like just yeah. by, by setting these protections and, you know, and working with spirit and co-creating, it's just, it's just amazing. It's, and it's fun. I mean, yeah. like my, I always tell people like, what if, you know, like, what if it was possible? Like, why? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It wasn't me that said it wasn't possible. I look back all the way to my childhood. I at no point that I think it wasn't. And in fact, when I was a wee little tot, I remember it being very possible and having some very magical experiences. Right. So, you know, bringing that energy in, into the adult and just seeing that world through magical eyes again is just, it's amazing. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, fun, interesting that maddening world at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to give one more story because this one's such a great one. One of my students was, she was in the path of Hurricane Ida. Ida? Irene? Ida? I don't know. Anyway, it was in, in New Orleans and she was in the path and she was like, uh, what am I going to do? It's supposed to be 175 mile an hour winds. Ah, it's supposed to go right over the top of my house. Ah, I have a trailer in my yard that I generally live in. So my mom can live in the house. Ah, right. And I said, okay, let's, let's talk about how to adjust your wards. And then let's go talk to the hurricane and ask her to miss you. And she was like, what? I'm like, let's just go talk to her. 
And so we talked about adjusting the wards because the wards usually are these solid walls at the edges of the property, right? And I said, let's just make them wobbly. Let's make them rubbery so that as the winds hit, they get they get slowed down by the rubber of the wards. And she was like, okay. I can do that. And then we went and talked to the hurricane and we said, hey, she's right here. Could you miss her? And the hurricane was like, yeah, sure. No problem. Okay. And so on the news, they all, they were all, a, you know, agape because the hurricane turned at the last second to go 20 miles away from the original path and not one of the models predicted that. <laughs> it's like, well, of course not because it moved because we asked it to, right? We, we, we just asked, right? And she had in her yard, her husband had parked their trailer, uh, the truck and the trailer on their driveway. They've got a very long driveway from the, the street to their house. And he parked the car, the, the truck and the trailer midway down that driveway with no cover, right? Because there was just no place else for it to be. And there was a kiddie pool, empty kiddie pool, plastic kiddie pool in the back of that trailer. And the trailer was one of those open slat trailers, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got a couple slats on each side, no top, right? So that kiddie pool should have come out and gone flying, right? That kiddie pool was still there at the end of the time the hurricane passed over her house. They lost one tree at the very edge of the property line where the where the wards wards were wobbling right they lost one tree and they had a few downed limbs but not much and all her neighbors were coming up to her saying why do you not have more damage <laughs> and she explained what she had done and they were like what right so but this is how it can work right you just have to be in alignment with the energies and so you know, these are the sorts of things that that energy work and magic and manifestation can do for you. It, it's just you have to know how to use them, right? And I, I love that you teach to break down the constructs, right? Because that's what it, it's just tearing down the walls, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I always joke that it'd be, it'd be cool to just teach a class that was one lesson. Uh, you already know how to do it, just do it but that's not how it works we have to get through the limiting belief structures that we've we've picked up through life uh, this life or lifetimes even right to, to, to get there but it it's you know it's that's a beautiful process in itself though yeah and i do teach the one lesson class it's how do you do magic you intend it that's that's <laughs> the one lesson class everything else is detail right <laughs> But, you know, if you've got your head wrapped around the idea that you need to be in the, the right quarter of the moon and, you know, have all the right ingredients and have all of the, you know, the herbs and, you know, all the sympathetic magic pieces that go into that, you know, and the supportive stuff and you have to call in the right people and blah, blah, blah. All of this stuff is, does it work? Yes, it, it works. Okay, let me just start with that. Yes, this stuff works. But it is all an illusion to make you feel like the magic is outside of you. You are the magic. The magic is you. You are the ultimate creator. You create your reality every single day, whether you intend to or not. And because your belief structure creates it, right? And so what we believe is a foundational intention that we set in our lives. So when I say whether you intend to, I mean conscious intention, whether you're setting a conscious intention or an unconscious intention through your beliefs and assumptions, right? We are intending things every single day, whether we are conscious of it or not. And that is what is creating our reality. When you can accept that, all of the rest of it becomes pointless. And, you know, I, I don't have to use sympathetic magic. I don't have to care about what phase the moon's in. I don't have to look at the astrology. I don't have to do, you know, any of the pieces. I don't have to have, you know, the right herbs or any of that stuff to do magic anymore because I know that I am the magic. And so the biggest challenge in doing this work is believing that you are the magic. When you can believe that you are the magic, everything else becomes irrelevant. Okay, so I think that's a good way to end this episode.
Absolutely. <laughs> so join us tomorrow for Tap In Tuesdays and the journaling exercises that we're doing there to help you to better understand yourself. And then Josh and I will see you next week on Magical Mondays. And that is all for this week. This is Spirit Guides. And just remember, what you pay attention to is what you attract. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm